Alrighty, so it is time for another tier list update. So uh, last time we did a tier list update, it was at the beginning of September, which is when uh, Green Levi and Blue Aaron came out. So there are quite a lot of characters to sort of update here, uh, or just get added to the list. I think for the most part, um, most of the characters that are on the list are still in a, in a really good spot. Um... I would say that I think a lot of these characters are still really good. Like, maybe I drop... It It might be a little controversial. I kind of want to drop Perg Melly down to S tier at this point. Because literally the banner that comes out after this update uh, is going to be supposedly a new Meliodas. Uh, so I can only imagine he's going to get outshadowed or overshadowed pretty quickly. I still think that these characters are still really good. Uh, I do run into a Demon King uh, team, uh, team from time to time uh, that still kind of gets the best of me, which is kind of annoying, but uh, they're definitely on like the lower end of the meta at the moment, so with the new melee coming out, I can only assume demons are going to kind of bounce back into the meta a bit there. Uh, but there are several characters that need to be added to the list, so namely, we have... Uh, okay, well, they're... <laughs> That I literally put them all in order, and then they just got taken completely back out of order. The first character is uh, Green Elaine, and this is um, actually a character that I thought was really nice. Uh, I'm going to give her A tier. I actually think that she was really good. She lowers the defense-related stats of the enemy. She makes fairies take less damage. Uh, she gives them d damage reduction, you know. Uh, and honestly... Even though the fairies don't have a whole lot of good usable teams or anything like that, there's not a lot of great fairy options, which I really hope that they'll pad out that section at some point. Like, even if they have to go back and add old fairies that they've already went, like, skipped over in the story or whatever, like, they, I know they never do that, but there's, there's a lot of really cool stuff that they could do with the fairy race, and uh, the giant race is also another one that's pretty small that doesn't really get the love that it deserves, but uh, I actually really liked this Elaine. There was a lot of, like, really fun and interesting combos you could kind of pull off with her uh, whenever she first came out, and uh, I still think that, I mean, you could maybe run her from time to time. She's not going to be, like, over the top crazy or anything, which is why I'm giving her S or A tier. Uh, I don't think that she is like you know gonna belong in any, either of these top two tiers. But uh, next up, we actually have the LR for the red um, Liz came out, and although this character is not like insane um, in the PvP scenario, and she actually can do some pretty cool stuff. Like uh, I've, I've seen a lot of people sort of do Albedo Ult Rush and stuff with her, which is kind of interesting. Um, just adding that sort of defense-related stat increase from her buff is really nice, plus a cleanse is fantastic. Um, it's uh, She's actually really proven her worth as far as like being one of the absolute best options for any PvE scenario, uh, which is really, really big. So the fact that she dominates the entire PvE side of the game, and on top of that, can be used in PvP, maybe not like insanely well but still can be used and can be pretty helpful uh i definitely think that that deserves s tier because she's literally blowing like one whole part of the game away just being like super super good in that regard so uh i'm not a hundred percent where the red one uh like the old school red one even is on this list to be honest with you it's probably pretty low uh, C tier, it looks like. I'm gonna take her off the list, uh, because as far as I know, I don't have, I, I've tried to look through, I don't think I have green Eskinor or regular red Lost Vein on here anymore. Um, I don't know at what point I updated this tier list to take those off, but, um, I'll also have to remove Margaret as well. You can see that she was in A tier. I'm gonna go ahead and take her out, because we'll end up getting to her shortly. So, um, I think the next character that came out after Elaine was actually Hell. The fact that I don't have Hell on this list is actually pretty interesting. I I know that a lot of people are not super, you know, like people are kind of like controversial a little bit about Hell. I actually think that she probably does deserve to have SS tier. Um, she is just a menace on the field. She really changes the way you have to play your characters and stuff like that just for her existing um, She can do some really really nice damage and everything. I think that she's just all around a really like really interesting character like a really good character maybe Maybe I give her high S tier instead because I mean she's If you have a cleanse on your team, which I mean not every team does have a cleanse um, and like with uh, with the unknown teams that we have at the moment, she's definitely a really big part of the team. I think um, she does a lot for the team, 
And so I think that she's very, very good. She's, you know, obviously by herself, she's not going to be, like, insane. Like, you can't just throw her on any any old team for any old game mode or anything like that. So I think that that does bring her down a little bit, maybe. But uh, I'm actually okay with S tier, like high S tier. I think that she's maybe not on par with, like, some of these, like, insane heavy hitters. Um, but uh, even then, like, it might be time to move. Uh, Demon King down a little bit as well. I'm not going to push him out of SS tier because he, pff, God, he can come back from nothing basically. But uh, I, do, I do think that he's still like phenomenal. Um, next up, I think it was, I have the, uh, the the list right here. We have Hell. Then it is Red Truth Seeker Merlin. So we have the Red Halloween Merlin. Um, I think I'm going to give this character A tier. I don't think that she's anything like over the top special. There's a lot of other good options that you can run on the unknown team. She does give some basic stats, which is nice. She can seal AOE cards, which I think is actually very unique and cool. I do really like that about her. And her peers can actually go kind of crazy sometimes. But uh, for the most part, she's a little limited. You have to run her basically with a full unknown team if you want to rank her cards up uh, at the beginning of your turn. And... If you don't rank your cards up, you're basically not going to be able to get that um, AOE seal off like anytime soon unless you just get really good card draw. So, I don't know. She's, I would say maybe even like lower A tier, but I don't think we're really doing like higher lows. So, I'm just going to put her in A tier. I think that's fair. I think that she's not like a bad character or anything like that, but uh, definitely not like the most usable option. Um, it almost makes me want to put her down in B tier because of like you're probably not going to use her as much. As um, some of the other options, like you could use Freyr with his Holy Relic, for example, uh, to make up for some of those basic stats. If you have Echidna, you could use Echidna for the basic stats. Uh, and then Echidna has like an Infect as well. Freyr has a Stance Cancel, which can be a little bit more relevant in the meta. Um, I guess it just depends. I think B tier is actually okay. Because she's not going to be a character that you really want to go out of your way to get. But can be like a nice option if you really want to run her kind of thing. So I think I'm okay with B tier actually. I'm talking myself out of certain placements, which is kind of funny. Uh, the next characters that we have are the Overlord collab characters, so let me go ahead and get these in order here. Uh, first up is Ainz. I think Ainz is probably one of the more underwhelming characters. He's definitely still pretty good uh, and can be. Um, he's unfortunately one of those characters that kind of runs into the whole like Whalers situation where he does much better at higher ult levels because for whatever reason they chose to make it to where his damage reduction scales off of his ultimate level which is really stupid. Death Sentence is honestly pretty insane. It's a really really cool effect. Um, you know it, it is going to take you at minimum two turns to be able to get it off and that can maybe be a little bit slow compared to like how the meta sort of you know progresses sometimes but uh, i do think that he's actually a really cool character sorry i'm got, got like hiccups a little bit as well um but i uh, i don't know he's just a little slow He's, he's definitely doesn't work nearly as well at lower ult levels. I'm going to give him A tier. He's not anything like super groundbreaking. Uh, plus, there's a couple of scenarios where if you have like a shield or something like that on your character, it actually, Death Sentence doesn't kill the character because the shield takes some of the, the HP like percentage that the character would have taken because the way that it's worded is it like it takes 100% of the character's HP Um but if you have a shield, it kind of like takes some of the shield and then the rest of your HP and whatever the shield sort of took from you, that's what you're going to be left with on your actual HP bar. Um, I don't know. I th maybe I'd need to test that a little bit more. But as far as I know, that's exactly how that works. And uh, that can be maybe a little bit off-putting. Um, but I don't know. We'll, uh, maybe he'll become more useful in like... Uh, another meta. But uh, for now, I would say he's A tier. Uh, Shao tier is next. Shaltir is legendary, like legit an insane character to have. She demolishes demonic beasts, which is insane. Obviously, you can't really use her on Nidhogg because Nidhogg doesn't have like a really well, well made uh, unknown team built around it or anything like that, but destroys any PvE activity that's not Nidhogg, but just off of like the pure counters alone. Uh, PvE or PvP, absolutely phenomenal. Has a turn one taunt that 
you don't even have to stance for if you don't want to. Once she builds up stacks, she does a lot of damage. The only thing I think she's pretty lacking in is her ultimate. If you have a 6-6 six, six ultimate and you're able to put on the stance and everything for the quell and everything, it can be really, really good, but... Um, Personally, I'm not a big fan of the ultimate. I have a lower ultimate level. I feel like I'm not scared of a lot of enemy albedos whenever they get their ultimate for the fact that it just it's it's not super super good. I think that she's insane. Um, whenever like so, if you don't attack into albedo, she gives um, your team the damage taken increase, which can be pretty significant. Like if I had the damage taken increase on, and then she had the ultimate, I'd be more scared. But um, I don't know. I think her ultimate is definitely like by far the most lacking part of her kit. But um, the fact that she is the first character to have Amplify on a counter is legit pretty nuts. So I'm giving her SS tier. I think that she deserves it. Uh, Shao tier is a character that I really like. I think that she's really cool and she can do a lot of damage, but I'm going to give her A tier. Uh, if she doesn't crit, she is legit like some of the, like one of the most disappointing units in the game just because it takes like a little bit of build up you get your berserk buff you have to have poison or uh not poison uh, you have to have bleed on the enemy for you to even be able to get um like super good use out of her cards and kit um so if they have any sort of cleanse you can't you know you don't want to infect too early or anything because that's what card you're going to end up having to use to put the uh, the bleed on it's uh she's a little situational and even then like sometimes the crit is uh, is pretty hit or miss which um i mean that's looking at more like pvp centric gameplay uh, i have been able to use her a little bit in heroes arena which i thought was actually really nice um not a whole lot of other like pve scenarios that i would recommend you really use her in because uh, when it comes down to it a lot of characters or like a lot of enemies in pve are going to be immune to the debuffs that she puts on anyway so it's not even you know really worth bringing her for that kind of thing but uh, i think that when she does work it's very satisfying very fun character uh but overall she just doesn't work so she's not super consistent with how she works and that is gonna have to like make me bring her down quite a bit because um like, if she was way more consistent, I would give her solid S tier for sure. But it's just, mm, can be a little bit hit or miss, unfortunately. Uh, Kokaitis, on the other hand, um, he's okay. I do see people get a really good amount of use out of him for, um, whatchamacallit, um, Guild Boss, the newest Guild Boss with, uh, I think Belgius is in rotation at the moment of me recording this. Uh, people are using this team where it's like LR Elizabeth, Kokaitis, um, Albedo and Festival Gother, and I, 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 I'm not super good with that team. Like I don't know what exactly <laughs> I need to be doing with that team a lot of the times, but uh, it can get you some pretty insane score. And I like the way that Kokaida sort of works. But if you don't know, he's PVE only, which makes me makes him a lot less useful. Like I almost want to put him in C tier because of that. But uh, I do think that he's okay. I think that he has some decent use cases. Um, he's not like, of course, like phenomenal or anything. Like he's not like he's in a tier with uh, with his PVE sort of use. But uh, I think that he can be like a nice character to have from time to time. So I'm gonna give him B tier. I think that's fine. I, you could even convince me to bring him down to uh, C tier, really. But um, after Kokaitis, we actually have uh, Green Hawk and Oslo, which is uh, definitely one that is not very good. I'm gonna give him D tier. I, like, I hate to give a character that low of a score, and I really like a lot of the Hawk and Oslo units. Um, like, just, I think the character's really cool. But this character gives you 50% defense. Not defense-related stats, defense. 50% defense in the sub-slot. Uh, that is just not very good. If he was blue, you could at least try to use him on, like maybe the defense team but this like 50 percent defense is not going to bring the defense team back into the meta uh like it's just it's not that significant um and because he's green he breaks the blue trend that you want from Rothtalia's passive and it just i don't know it just he's such a really bizarre unit he was a step up banner so he was really cheap so i can't really say too much about him but he, he's legit worse than the, the blue one as far as i'm concerned at least the blue one sort of like helped out the team that he was meant to be sort of sub slotted into 
um, and he, you know, puts debuffs and stuff on, because he was meant to be, like, a backliner for, like, the OG wing, or, like, OG Fest King sort of unit, uh, or, like, the debuff, like, D DOT, damage over time sort of, like, units or whatever, but, man, he, uh, he did better than this, this green one did, and that is saying a lot, so, uh, yeah, he's pretty bad. Uh, next up, we have Green Elat. Green Elat is a character that I actually do like, but... I would say maybe B tier, not a character that you really want to go like out of your way for. The substat or the stats that you get from Green Elat are not like over the top crazy. She is once again getting a, a def or an, a, an ult gauge lower card. Uh, the heal card that she has is okay. I actually don't mind the heal card. It's actually kind of nice. But for the most part, I mean, like, you can use her, you can use Tristan. Uh, I feel like those two characters are pretty interchangeable as far as, like, the backliner goes and the goddess team. Like, I would, I like the more aggressiveness of having the stats from the Elat, uh, the Elat but Tristan gives you defense, which makes you tankier, which is kind of like the opposite end of a backliner for the goddess team. And I really think that they're like super interchangeable. They, they kind of just belong on the same tier together because they, they just basically, you know, do the same kind of thing. So I'm, I'm going to give her B tier. I, I do like the character. I use the character uh, when I do want to use the goddess team. But um, overall, not anything over the top crazy. So next... We have Elizabeth, the brand new Elizabeth. Uh, actually, with Elac coming out, we need to go. We need to go ahead and place the uh, the blue Ma LR Margaret. Uh, I think I'm gonna give LR Margaret. I think we had regular Margaret in A tier. I'm just gonna give her S tier. She is not maybe what I was expecting from an LR. She's definitely the most disappointing LR to date so far. Um, I think that it's one of those scenarios where they were already giving a good amount of support to her PvP team in general, so they didn't want to, like, over the top make her, like, super insane, which I think is a little disappointing. Maybe they should have just made the PvP usage for either, like, the, the, the red LR Liz or even... Like, I don't want to say, like, make the new Elizabeth even better, but, um, I don't know. It, even if they were to drop, like, a Holy Relic or something for, like, Mael, for example, I think that that would have been better than rushing into making an LR for Margaret right now when she was already still pretty good and you didn't really need to waste the LR slot on her for now. Like, I'm glad that, you know, I like Margaret. I do. I think that she getting an LR is pretty hype, pretty cool. I like the costume that she got. I like the changes that she, you know, got made. But they just weren't enough. They just weren't enough for her specifically to shine the way that you kind of want an LR to. Like, all the other LRs uh, were very significant upgrades on the original unit, whereas Margaret was definitely not as good. I think that as a whole, you know, with the way that the Goddess team sort of worked out now, they dropped Elaine, they dropped the new Liz, you got an LR for Margaret. All of those things together do make the Goddess team pretty good, but as far as, like, her being, like, significantly better, it's not really the case. Um, I do think that she's definitely better than what she was, of course, because, like, she got a pretty big stat boost and everything, but, um, you know, I, I wouldn't give her, you know, SS tier. I think, I mean, it, it was a significant upgrade. I, I, I kind of want to, I feel like giving her low A tier, or low, low S tier, like, uh, we already had a regular Margaret in A tier. I don't, uh, you know, it was a, it was a boost, but I was a bit disappointed about it. I don't know how you guys feel, but, um, just maybe not as good as I was maybe hoping. Uh, we do have the new Liz. I think I'm going to give the new Liz S tier as well. This new Liz is one of those characters where she does work on multiple teams. You don't necessarily have to use her on the Goddess team, but she's going to do significantly worse on any team that's not the Goddess team because the Goddesses have so much synergy with stats and stuff like that. Um, it really does make a huge difference. Um, she is one of those characters... So there's like... There's a couple of different characters in the game that will put a debuff or a buff on before you attack. This is a character that puts on, she puts a, a gray buff on herself after an attack is used, which means that um, you can't proc her passive super early. Like you have to do three attacks in your first turn, then you'll have three stacks on. You have to do one more attack to get her fourth stack, and then you can use her single target to stun or whatever so you basically like this is a character that you really want to go first with 
Uh, you, you basically have to use all three attacks turn one. If you end up using like a Margaret buff turn one into double attack, you'll only have two stacks on, which means you have to use two cards in the next turn and then her single target to be able to stance cancel. Um, I feel like a lot of the times I'm, I'm rushed into using the single target to stun a character or use it for the stance cancel and I don't get to use the AoE as much as I would really want to. Um, there's just a couple of like weird things about the character that um, I, I definitely think could have maybe flowed a little bit better. I do think that she's really good in the fact that like the damage that she deals is great. Uh, her like, you know, the, the stun and everything is honestly really, really nice to have. The fact that it's part of the passive means that it can't be skill disabled or anything. Uh, she puts damage reduction on if you have her at high enough ult level. She has a revive built in, so her utility is phenomenal. Uh, I think that she's great. And on that note, actually, I'm going to move um, <laughs> Light Liz down because the original Light Liz is nowhere near this character and she does not deserve to be in the same tier as her anymore. Um, but... Yeah, I don't know. I, uh, I think S tier is where I'm going to stay. I think that she's one of those characters that relies on other big components to really hold their own. Whereas, um, you know, I feel like a lot of these characters up here can still... Well, I, I guess that's not necessarily true with Escanor. Uh, Escanor does kind of require a full human team as well. But, like, I feel like his like he's so significantly better... Um, on the on the human team that it's like he's like a huge pivotal piece whereas i feel like if you don't run liz like you could maybe run another option uh i don't know, that may, I don't know what i'm saying anymore i'm, I'm getting off topic but uh, i don't know i think st is fine i think that she's fine where uh, where she's at right there um uh, if you have any pushback on that one let me know maybe i'll reconsider but um yeah i don't know the only <laughs> i guess the only thing i'm kind of fighting myself on is like escanor Definitely isn't great by himself either, but he's like a really significant character. I get use out of this character in like PvE stuff, PvP stuff. Um, I really, really enjoy using this Eskimer. Whereas the Liz is not maybe as exciting to use. Takes a little bit more build up and everything like that. Which I mean, you know, you can build up some on Eskimer. Either way. Uh, last character that we have is this brand new Red Christmas Roxy. I... Don't really like this unit all that much. Uh, I think that she's okay. Um, I guess wherever Green Easton is, Green Halloween Easton, which looks like it's B tier, I guess I'm just going to throw her in B tier as well because, like a lot of you guys have said, um, running the Blue Roxy is just so much, so much better uh, for the human team. Uh, than running this Red Roxy in the back slot. I completely agree. The, the Blue Roxy is phenomenal. Um, if you don't maybe have the Blue Roxy, but you have the Red Roxy, well, I, that's a weird scenario to be in. But uh, I do like the fact that she can be ran with multiple teams. That's great. I do like that, of course. But the, the max HP stuff that you get from having debuffs on the enemy from her passive... It's very minimal. It doesn't feel like it actually makes that big of a difference. I think B tier is fine. Um, I think overall, I'm pretty happy with uh, with the placement so far. Like I said, if you have any, this is my own personal tier list, so this is kind of where I want the characters to be. But I can be swayed. If you have any any strong opinions on like moving some of these characters around, like maybe moving, you know, Pergmeli down to S tier might be a little controversial, but he's just about to be a year old at this point. We're about to, you know, overshadow him with a new Melee, which I don't know what the new Melee is going to do yet. Maybe he'll be his own thing that is completely different than Pergmeli, and he'll still have his use cases or whatever. But uh, for the most part, I think I'm pretty happy with this. Um, I actually think some of this could be restructured a little bit. I think I'm going to move both of these characters down to A tier because neither of these characters are really super good in the meta anymore. Um, I don't know. I might mess around with some of them, some of this stuff as well. I might need to restructure some of these, uh, some of these characters like Chad King. Does he really deserve to be an S tier? I'm not sure. I might mess with that some though, but uh, that's pretty much it for like adding the new characters to the list. I might try to restructure some of this before we end up doing an up or another update on it, but uh, this is where it's going to sit for now, I think. So that's pretty much it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you like I said, any thoughts, opinions, leave them down in the comments below. I will be sure to read over them and maybe evaluate where I have placed something, but uh, that is where we're sticking with it. So thanks for watching. Subscribe if you have not already, and I will see you guys tomorrow.